<laughs> In this episode of Finno Brick Machine, we are going to make uh, well a bunch of bushings, or not a bunch, two actually, and uh, then we are going to make uh, three gears. Uh, the fourth one I will make uh, later, and uh, well, uh, and try these gears out whether they mess well. Hmm. That will be at the end of this episode. So, uh, well, I, of course, I already did these uh, gears. These are here, all three of them. Ah, come out now. And, uh, well, whether they mess. <laughs> well, look at the end of the episode, there you can see. So, let's uh, start with the bushings and uh, then go on with everything else. Turning bearing bushings is a very straightforward business. Drill a hole, turn the outer diameter, part off and finally reap the hole to a final size. This material is not bronze. It is brass because I didn't have suitable stock for this. Brass is not optimal material for bearings as it wears out relatively quickly. In this application the speed or load are not that great, so brass should survive. Brass is easy material to cut. Peeling off 5 mm from diameter is not bad at all, even in a snowball lathe like this. It can also be cut really fast and it does not need any lubrication. The disadvantage uh, are the chips that spray all over the place. That is the reason for this uh, rubber mat next to my lathe tool. This is 20 mm cold rolled mild steel. I don't cut it all the way through, but uh, twist it off instead.
I had a work holding problem and my solution was not pretty or functional. This is not a functional gear. It is just another steel rod with some teeth on it. Uh, after a miserable failure. <laughs> well, uh, I ended up uh, doing it like this. I have a long, long uh, spare here. Uh, well, uh, I will do two of these uh, pinions out of this first and then uh, the rest will become a, a, an armor. So uh, hopefully that uh, doesn't get wasted. Uh, so this is just uh, 20 millimeter uh, uh, gold rolled mild steel. And uh, yeah, I have turned uh, this to the uh, uh, correct diameter of the, the outer Uh, that bubble is quite unclear. So uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, the module system for spur gears. I am using module 1 gears in this application, which means that all the basic module values are multiplied by 1. Even I can do multiplication uh, by 1 uh, without using a calculator. In a module system, the gear tooth is divided heightwise into three parts. The topmost part is called addendum, and it starts from the middle of the tooth and extends to the very top of it. The basic value of this height is 1, so if I make a module 1 gear, then the height of this part is obviously 1. Consequently, if I would be making a module 0.5 gear, then the height of addendum would be 0.5. The middle of the gear, also called as the pitch circle, is also easy to calculate when the module and the number of teeth is known. The pitch circle diameter equals to the number of teeth multiplied by the module. <laughs> for example, for a 40 teeth gear, the pitch circle diameter would be 40. If the module is 1, since 40 times 1 is mm, 40. <laughs> Consequently, for a 16 teeth module 0 0.5 gear, the pitch circle diameter would be 16 times, times 0 0.5, which is 8. Since the height of addendum is 1, the major diameter of a 16 teeth module 1 gear is uh, 16 plus 2, which is 18. The bottom part of the tooth including the clearance, is called dedendum. Dedendum itself consists of two parts, the lower part of the tooth and the clearance. The height of the dedendum is 1.157 times the module. 
the 0.157 is the height of the clearance. When milling the gap between the teeth, two dimensions should be known. First one should know the major diameter of the gear, which uh, for a module 1 gear is the number of teeth plus 2. So the major diameter for a 16 teeth gear would be 18. The other dimension is the cutting depth. For a module system gear, the cutting depth is simply addendum plus denendum which will be 2.157 times the module. Since we are using module 1, the cutting depth uh, is uh, 2.157 times 1, which is, hmm, <laughs> you quested 2.157. By using involute gear cutters, one does not need to worry about all the complex mathematics behind these gears. All you need to know is the major diameter and the cutting depth. Of course, one should choose the correct cutter for the gear under work. The cutters come in sets of eight, each dedicated for a specific range of number of teeth. Since uh, we are making 16 teeth gear, we choose the cutter number two. The numbering of the cutters may vary depending on the manufacturer, so it is better to check the documentation at this point. Uh, so I was using 2.25, which is uh, actually wrong. It's too deep. So now, now it's correct. Uh, well, it's my belief. And uh, yeah. Uh, and as you can see, I have moved the cutter to the other side, so it's easier for me to see what's happening here. <laughs> so now, uh, well, this will be our first, uh, no, second cut already. And uh, I'm feeding this manually, and this uh, is running uh, about 100 revolutions per minute, not more than that. This is the last one. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's always as exciting if this uh, works or not. This time I think I made it. off uh, now. So first I measure it uh, from this. This is my three millimeter wide cutting tool. So I measure it from this edge. I reset my travel indicator here like that. Come here and then uh, this uh, total length should be 20 millimeters. So that's 20 and then three millimeters for the plate. And furthermore, half a millimeter for working, uh, cleaning up uh, the other end. 
and then there you are. That uh, that's our point where we cut it. And how is our seemingly 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 okay? Let's see now. This will rumble a lot. And yeah, it's not concentric. It doesn't need to be at this point. It's not ready. Uh, this will be finalized in a collar chuck, uh, but uh, now, so now this is ready. So now this is the other video. Well, there is a, this is a little bit different uh, because it has a longer uh, portion of this uh, 13 millimeter sack. Well, I can get uh, use uh, this area as well where we had this uh, this uh, uh, <coughs> gear teeth. Uh, well, uh, I just cut them off, uh, yeah, uh, because uh, uh, it will be 13 millimeters, 13, yeah, uh, well, uh, the area will be 30, long, long, so, yeah, and I'm uh, building this like, uh, well, half a millimeter per time, at a time, running uh, quite slowly, maybe 400 RPM. This is still uh, more than 13 millimeters, so... Actually, we are using exactly the same uh, cutting parameters. So the speed is the same, the cutting depth is the same, feed is the same, so... <laughs> Just two is a little bit different. Should be 17 millimeters. So it is actually quite accurately uh, 16.99. <laughs> so very good. Oh, wow. Okay. 
So, this is now the other pinion. <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, it's uh, already dialed in here. And uh, it's, uh, well, uh, yeah, it's just to mill the teeth. Now, this is the last one. Yeah. And, uh, well, let's see. Uh, okay. Wow. Hopefully, I, I didn't make any big mistakes here. No, uh, I think I, I didn't. Uh, but you never know. Now the longer pinion uh, in a 13 millimeter collet, and uh, well, I'm uh, I will first clean up this face. Uh, it's uh, really, really uh, well. How would I say? Uh -huh. Disgusting. <coughs> I will take it away, measure it, and uh, look uh, how much uh, do we need to peel off. Uh, let's see now. 40 millimeters. It should be a total length. So that was 30. That's 40. Now it should be 40.5. <laughs> and there uh, it is. <laughs> yeah, it is uh, 40.5. So. Oh wow, uh, 0.5 millimeters. But uh, this the gear uh, amount should be 10 millimeters. So let's see how much is it. It's 0 point, 10 point 35 maybe. So I can only take 35 millimeters away from that. Okay, uh, not 35, but 0 0.35. <laughs> tool and now if this uh, drops the plate now it's the time for it to do it because this is uh, really uh, well how would I say it's a really nasty uh, vibrating cut and I just put it there something like that maybe well I can do it this way as well 
What's the combo here? Check the before. Yeah, now <laughs> it will. It can loosen the plate. Uh, depends on how well I did uh, silver solder it. <laughs> Let's see. Now. Okay, from this point, two millimeters from diameter. Drop the plate. <laughs> yeah, it didn't drop it. Nice. Okay, now what I shall not do is to uh, uh, like uh, wipe those uh, tops of these uh, gear teeth because uh, that that uh, well it doesn't end up well. So what I can do is to use some emery paper there and then uh, with a steel brush get rid of the rest of the board. But that will be a little bit late. So now we have here, uh, well, this is now <laughs> uh, a little bit too long, I believe. 0 0.2 millimeters too long. Let's measure it. It's uh, a little bit less too long. It's uh, 0 0.1 millimeters too long. Did I take too much from the... No, this is exactly 10 millimeters. So, uh, well, now 0 0.1 millimeters away from this end. We need to change the collet. So 18 millimeters call it. <laughs> it doesn't want to go in there. Of course it doesn't. Ah, okay. I think we need to deal with the bull before I continue here. So it will be some emery paper here. And after that I use a steel brush to get, get it really clean. Mm. Ah, always this. should do it. Yeah. Now let's see. Yeah. Yeah. This removes the bull. Yeah. No bur. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. <coughs> now it should go <laughs> into the 18 millimeter collet. Easy. So 18. Uh, 16. 16, 17, 18. Let's see. Yeah. Definitely better. A little bit tight. 
there is some raised bull. No. Oh! <laughs> no. Okay, let's push it. All the way through. <laughs> oh, that was a mistake. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. This works always, so you can put it there. Yeah, now it goes. Okay. So I need to shorten this end, 13 millimeters. Where is the index? It's down there. Well, it should hold it quite well there. Let's see how it looks. Very straight. So, 0 0.1 millimeters away from that. I'm going to use this plate for that one. suitably short. So it's two hundredths of a millimeter oversize. Not too bad. And uh, now, uh, next we shall make a hole through it. Uh, and now I first uh, stop drill it. And uh, let's see. Oh yeah, okay. 
So now I will uh, ream it to 10 millimeters. And I really hope that this uh, hole is straight. decreased uh, these components here and now my next task is to glue those inside there. Huh. Well that's uh, easy enough. Just put some glue there. Oh! Ah. Just uh, don't drop it. Ah. Okay. Hmm, that was uh, not good. <laughs> well, let's see now which way was it supposed to that way. So let's do this one more time again. So I spread some glue into here after dropping it on the floor and having a lot of uh, stuff in there. Then I just put it into there. Like that. That's our first basic. That's that. And then, uh, well, after a while it will, will stay in there. Won't come out, believe me. And same applies to this one once I get it there. Like that. And then we just wait. Okay. Well, uh, I spent some quality time outside with my uh, angle grinder. <laughs> and I made these uh, pucks, hooks, discs. And uh, yeah, and uh, this one I already turned uh, down to a thickness of 10 millimeters. Well, now I do this, uh, the other one. Uh, so how I do it? This, this is a very simple thing. I have uh, my three jaw chuck here, uh, which is uh, the jaws are turned upside down or downside up or, or whatever they are turned. <laughs> and uh, well, I choose the better side of these two. And now it seems like this one is the better side. I just put it here and see that it is somewhat uh, at this point it uh, really doesn't matter a lot how how it is there I think that's our place then I put it there let's see if it's it should be yeah okay oh yeah and then uh, this is a matter of uh, well uh, this has a lot of extra uh, about five millimeters so and now I'm uh, fishing for the high spots here I think there is our, our high spot yeah yeah that's the high spot uh, and then, then I lock my carriage here. Uh, 
and then I pull my <laughs> compound because now I'm uh, advancing with the compound and not with the carriage. So let's see. Uh, the first uh, now uh, my shoots brille suoja lasit safety goggles. Uh, okay. <laughs> turn it. Oh, where is oh, this goes really near. <laughs> I'm looking for that one because I always use it to do this. And now since we have a good surface, oh well. Let's brush these a little bit just to ensure that we don't have any chips there because all those chips have an impact on I just need to push it somehow so let's put here this one this is not very good idea to have a sharp point pushing but I don't push it a lot, just mildly. And then I loosen this a little bit. Okay, now I can feel drag when it uh, pushes it against uh, those jaws. <laughs> now it's pretty securely there. And, uh, well, as uh, straight as it can be in this chuck. So now, Actually, we should now, uh, let's see.
<laughs> yeah, as I said, it throws the chips all over the place. <laughs> yeah, it took everything it had inside there, and uh, wow. Yeah, now I need to clean clean up my environment. Uh, yeah, but the surface is uh, really nice. Surface is nice, uh, yet we have the chips all over the place. it gets with drilling. Uh, you could get it uh, maybe more accurate by boring. Okay, so well I, I off the camera I turned this down to 10 millimeters 10 with the 10 M10 die made uh, this uh, M10 thread here. Uh, we also have a center hole there so now when I turn this down to 16 millimeters, uh, it will be concentric uh, with this center hole and this entire thing is sitting in, an, uh, M, in a 20 millimeter collet. So now I just turn this down to 16 millimeters and I'm running this about, uh, well maybe 400 rpm and uh, uh, feeding uh, 0 0.078 millimeters per minute and uh, I'm cutting half a millimeter at the time from diameter This is a, a byproduct of uh, one <laughs> thing I made lately. So there you are. Oh, 
Well, it's 61 millimeters under the aim is... Uh, <laughs> well, well, I will be turning this now uh, uh, off the camera. Uh, we need to put two, 20 more millimeters away from the diameter. So now, <coughs> a small trivia for you. <laughs> So, uh, what's wrong with this? Uh, well, first of all, uh, uh, the uh, center height is suitable. I get the cut depth uh, by touching this, yeah, all right. And, uh, well, uh, and uh, the cutter is in place as it was in the earlier one. Uh -huh. Did you guess? Well, it's here under. <laughs> uh, we need to change the cutter. Uh, this is number two, and what we are really needing here is number... Which way does this... Which way does... Uh, that way. <laughs> so we need uh, number six. Number two is wrong here. This... Uh, Gear cutters are numbered, so for each module you have eight cutters, and each of them is uh, uh, dedicated for a certain uh, uh, number of teeth range. Uh, this one uh, is something I don't uh, recall what was uh, the range, but yeah. Anyway. Uh, this is now the correct for this number of teeth we have here. Okay, let's see if I can... Here. Nice and tight. Hm. Ah. Well, is this screw too long? Probably yes. <laughs> At least it's uh, horribly wrong. Uh, not wrong, long. Oh, there you are. Yeah, and of course I have dialed er everything in here. And now, now we can do this. And uh, this will be exactly the same process than with the 16 teeth, but this is even simpler. Yeah, we have more teeth, but uh, the dividing head, the division ratio is so that uh, for 14, 40 uh, turns of uh, that crank, this turns one. So, for every teeth, I just turn uh, the crank one turn, and there you are. We, because this is going to be 40, uh, 40 uh, teeth uh, here. So, yeah, I'll come back when I'm ready with this one. It's uh, very repetitive. Well, okay. <laughs>
well, uh, the final thing is to, well, clean it up. And this, uh, I already, uh, like, uh, in the lake I, uh, uh, well, sandpaper it, but uh, this is actually the final step. Getting rid of all this wool in there. Yeah. This, yeah. <laughs> Not a good idea. I think there we are. It's ready. Yeah, this one is not ready. We have a... This uh, must have a key. But yeah, it's just filing. I will file that key. Okay. Let's now try it out. Okay. This is now the gear and it goes uh, into that, that place uh, with a key. I don't have the key yet. So this goes inside like there. And it's a perfect fit. It's a sliding fit uh, as H7 should be. And then we have this thing, which uh, should then mess with that one. Well, it, it messes. It has some tights. Not really tights. Maybe just, um, yeah. That's perfect, actually. Yeah. The nice thing about this uh, video editing and uh, making videos is that you can travel in time. <laughs> well, uh, again I have uh, these gears, they are ready here. Uh, only one is uh, missing at the moment. And uh, that one I really will make later. It's uh, exactly the same process as uh, with uh, this one. So there is uh, nothing more to see. So, and uh, yeah, well, in the next episode of Finno Greek Machining, uh, we are going to uh, make the hand crank, and uh, of course, uh, by then the last gear will be done uh, as this will have the key, etc. We will try this out, uh, this press. Uh, well, there is one thing uh, missing from the other side, but it should already work, uh, sort of. Well, but that will be in the next episode of Window Grid Machining. Well, till then, bye!